Hey, everybody, welcome to the Ron Line Report. Of course, we got the Chicago Pro coming right up. So I had to get this guy on, had to. This is one of my favorite 212 pros all the way from Florida. You know him on Instagram as IFBB underscore Broku. Did I get that right? Jason Lowe. What's up, Jason? What's going on? It's good to be back. Yeah, Jason. So you're, this is your first show of the year, the season, and we're in July. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go through history stuff with people first, <laughs> though, because not everyone knows. You're one of the few people who has successfully transitioned from classic physique to 212. The mm -hmm. two, obviously, that's George Peterson's thing. He did that last year. Keon did that last year. Uh, you did it actually before they all did. You were the first one out of everyone. So, yeah, kind of <laughs> tested the waters. Yeah, because let's see. And so in 2018, you were still in classic. Uh, you won the San Antonio Pro that year. And you took a very, a very respectable third place between Henri Pierre Arnaud. I don't know what happened. Henri, Henri, where'd you go, dude? You got to come back. I know. Like, I see ridiculous. his post every now and then. But, like, you know, he was he was huge. Too. He was great. He was great. Yeah. And uh, Keon Pearson was runner up in that show. No slouch. Uh, 2019, you took seventh place at the Arnold Classic. Then you went to the Indy Pro, uh, which is probably was only like a month later, right? If that, three, as, three, three or four weeks, yeah. As a 212, <laughs> and you, you got top 10. What would you weigh at your first time as a 212? The craziest thing. So I was 192. I had to be on 192 in Classic. Okay. And it was three or four weeks later, the Indy Pro, and I was so depleted and flat for the Arnold Classic because I just yeah. couldn't fill out. Yep. And uh, we ate so much food for those three, four weeks leading into that show. And I was still flat and like strided everywhere. Wow. And uh, I think I was about 208, hmm. which is bigger than I was when I actually made the full transition to 212. Wow. So I'm curious, was that, was that when you decided at that moment? Did you think maybe I should just be a 212? We had already decided before the Arnold. Okay. Yeah, I, before the Arnold, I was struggling so bad to make weight that we had already decided, but I was already qualified for the, that year's Olympia. Yeah. So I was like, after the Olympia, we'll make the switch for, for good. Fair enough. And is that your first Olympia jacket you have on, a, on the wall? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, my wife my nice. wife encased that in glass with <laughs> my, uh, my badge and the little... Uh, the, that's just the name card that went at the Meet the Olympians they put on their table. So oh, you got to be part you of Meet the Olympians? Wow. Yeah. Please ignore the police helicopter. They're coming to get me. <laughs> but uh, So, okay, that was your last year in Classic. 2019, didn't take you long. Uh, 2020 last year, which was the worst year for the, the world, basically. <laughs> but, you know, I, I give props to you and anybody else who competed last year, especially in multiple shows, because everybody was prepping a lot longer than they had anticipated. Oh, yeah. And I mean, anyone who's prepped knows just one 16 week prep is that's that's brutal enough. But just tell me how long, how much out of the last year were you in prep? How many weeks total would you say? Um, well, I was probably one of the lucky ones because I actually planned on Tampa being my first show of the year. OK, but then I still did Tampa. And then five weeks late, I prepped for 16 weeks for Tampa. Yeah. And then five weeks later was New York. Five weeks later was Chicago, and then nine weeks later was the Olympia. What's that? Five, five, nine. So nineteen plus sixteen. Thirty-five that... weeks or so. Oh, dude, that's horrible. <laughs> so, so okay, I mean, uh, and let's let people know how you did Tampa, your first show. Yeah, wasn't that great? Eleventh place. Best. New York Pro, though. Yes. You look great at the New York Pro. Thank you. If Bo Lewis had broken his foot that day or something, you <laughs> would have won that New York Pro, man. Um, yeah, that it was, was uh, it was a battle. It was I, I honestly like Bo came up to me at finals and he's like, dude, this is your show. He's like, you got this. And I was like, man, I don't know. It's a battle. It could go either way. Yeah. Like, obviously, I wanted to win, but I wasn't mad because it really was a coin toss. It, it could have gone either way. Yeah. You had the better condition. I'll say it. I'm a friend of Bo's and I'll say it right. You definitely he had, better he had condition. a little size on me. The thing was, though. At Tampa, he got run, he was runner up at Tampa. Yeah. And I was way back in like 11th or whatever. Third, yeah. third, I don't remember. George Peterson but, won that show. Yeah. Yeah. George won that. Yeah. And then the judges told him to come in fuller. Obviously, they told me to come in harder. Yeah. So we uh, both did what they wanted. So, like, they did, they rewarded us both for what we did. We followed, we, we did what they asked. Right. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad yeah. it didn't go the other way. They told what you told, what they told you to do was didn't end up being like 
your downfall. Because like, that has happened to people. It, yeah. happens, it happens more to women for some reason. They'll say, mm-hmm. come in softer at the next show. And then the woman that wins has like strided jaws. That's what happened to my wife. My, her last mm-hmm. national show. That she, she came in and she was peeled to the bone, striated glutes in bikini. Yeah. Oh, come and on. yeah. Come on. And uh Sandy told her, come in five pounds fuller and you would have killed it. Wow. So the next show she comes in literally five pounds fuller, and they went with the harder girls that were like leaner. So in bikini. I, I could never judge I could never judge bikini anyway. So I don't know. Bikini should not have striated glutes. Can we agree no, on that? No. I, mean, I told her, I was like, you need to go eat some pancakes or something to fill out, but I wasn't coaching her for that show. Oh. I am coaching her now, and she's coming to win Tampa and get then go to North Americans. What's her name? Uh, Ashley Lowe. Ashley Lowe. Uh, okay. Ash Ash Squats Lowe on Instagram. <laughs> See, that I can remember. I, I'm not going to remember <laughs> Ash Lowe. Ash Squats Lowe. Good one. Yeah. But, but with an E at the end of Lowe. Yes. So your family owns that massive chain of uh, home improvement centers, right? <laughs> well, I wish. Yeah, don't I we wish, because I just had to buy a bunch of stuff from them to start taking care of my yard. Yeah, I mean that that's a big company and then obviously Home Depot. But uh okay, so let's finish up 2020. So you did that, you did Chicago Pro in the I think that was October in Atlanta. What a year. And the Chicago Pros yeah. again in Atlanta. Yes. Should Buck Buckhead, some section of Atlanta called Buckhead. We're gonna have to find it somehow. Yeah, last year was so easy, wasn't it? The you got off the plane, <laughs> you went through the airport, and in the airport there was a train that you got on for free. It took you right to like all the, the convention center. Oh, I actually awesome. drove last year. So, uh, and I'm driving uh, again this year. Oh, uh, wow. Well. So that actually makes sense for you because you're bringing some stuff with you. So. Well, and it's, and it's only six hours, really. It's not that like to skip the hassle of go, going through airport sec- security and wearing the mask on the plane and all that. It was just easier just to drive up there, you know? Well, between the two Have of you. Have a cooler full of food. Yeah, probably 20 pounds of food between the two of you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Okay. So yeah, Chicago, you took fifth. Keon won that. And then you went to Olympia one more time. And uh, I, how'd you do in there? I can't even, can't 11th. read my own damn right. 11th. Yeah. They like yeah. giving you 11th at the Olympia apparently. Oh no. You, you, you didn't place at the other Olympia, but that was long. That no, was long I didn't place in the classic physique Olympia, but uh, yeah, I got 11th in the 212. So okay. I, I still feel like I could have been a few spots higher. Yeah. But at the same time, I, looking at the pictures, I wasn't quite as crisp as I was for like New York or Chicago. Yeah. And considering the fact that I moved up to a you know bigger division, if you want to say it's bigger, it is. Um, it is. Yeah. And uh, placed better than I did the previous year in Classic. You know, I can't be mad. No, I mean you know, Classic is. I don't want to call it the toughest division because they're all tough. But I think classic has become the most competitive simply because open bodybuilding, we do get some new talent here and there. Obviously, we got like a Nick Waco come along or Hunter Labrada, but it's we get like one or two really good people a year in open. In classic, it seems like there's consistently been three, four, five really good guys that come out of nowhere every year. Oh, yeah. And yeah. So the Olympia, classic Olympia every year gets tougher and tougher and tougher. Whereas Definitely. the open Olympia, it's like eh, sometimes it's actually they'll say, well, last year was better. I've never heard anyone saying classic so far last year was better. It's always, yeah. it's always, yeah, better. there's, it's just a stacked division. It really is. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think a lot of the talent, nobody wants to be 260, 270 ripped anymore. Pretty much nobody. M- most mm-hmm. people don't. I, yeah. I agree. It's, um, I mean, I went to classic because, you know, it was, it fit me better at the yeah. time, yeah. but then my body wanted to keep growing and growing. And it's like, all right, well, I, I'm, suffering more and it's probably more unhealthy for me to try and suck down to make weight plus i'm, lo- I'm having to lose muscle mm. every year to get back down to classic weight so it's just pointless this is yeah. bodybuilding not just like body maintaining body maintaining a body starving yeah mm. exactly so mm. you know mm. and I, it's funny i get comments all the time being like so when are you moving to open you know when, when are you and i'm like well if my body wants to keep growing i'm not going to stop it you know well that's what i want to ask you next is i'm not going to force it but i'm not going to stop it you were already pretty close to the limit last year what you weighed in like close to 212 didn't you i at uh i think uh the olympia i want to say i weighed in at 209 okay i mean you you, you're up there you're close to the edge is what i'm saying yeah i'm gonna be right at the edge 
this year for sure because I, I was 213 this morning mm. but we've been like really pushing hard and starving I think Aceto really wants me uh just under 212 mm. before we get there so that I can eat a couple meals before weigh-ins and not have to starve and flatten out even more before weigh-ins so you have uh, I was just looking at the schedule bear with me so you have to do the way you, the, they're going to weigh and measure you at the meeting which is uh Thursday at four. Right. And then it looks like you go on for judging. They have two round two. They broke up the judging into two. I'm trying to figure out how many meals you can get in here. I'm sure you and Chris <laughs> have already mapped it out. But if they're doing men's physique classic and 212 at the second round of judging, I'm guessing you're going to want stage around one. Something like that. 212 will probably go on around one. I don't eat much the day of the show. Yeah. Well, that's a so, good idea. Because I, I want to be able to control my stomach as good as possible. So we really try and fill out the day before. Yeah, yeah. And if not two, if not the two days leading into it, because I, I'm not like a Keon Pearson that can pull a deep vacuum in the off season mm -hmm. <laughs> with yeah. a full belly. Right. You know? right, right. So like to be able to control my stomach and pull that vacuum and keep it tight, you know, I can't have too much in my stomach the day of the show. Yeah. I mean, you talked to, have you, you've talked to Jose Raymond before, I'm sure. Another, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he FaceTimed me right after I uh, pre-judging in New York last year. <laughs> he barely eats on the day of the show because he wants his oh, he yeah. wants his midsection nice and flat. So you know he New can York, afford he can afford to be a little flat. He's he's built like a tank, obviously. New York Pro last year, all I had before pre-judging was two hard boiled eggs and two rice cakes. Oh my gosh! So what does acido carb you up on? Is it like regular food, or do you get pastries and donuts and all kind of cool stuff? It depends on how flat I am and how mm. just how my metabolism is working. But we typically stick with, you know, uh, chicken, steak, rice, potatoes, Okay. but uh. um, mostly rice. But then, you know, he'll throw some if I'm burning through it really quick, we'll throw some cookies in there. Like oh. the, at the Olympia, uh, before prejudging, I had two my cookie dealer my cookie food. dealer. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, I, I had my chicken and rice and then a, a cookie, my cookie dealer cookies too. So nice. Those and like two delicious. meals before prejudging. Those are delicious. My cookie dealer yes. cookies. You can't even come up with a favorite flavor because there's like 30 different flavors every, every time they come out with a. I don't know that, that strawberry shortcake one I had yeah, not too long ago was phenomenal. <laughs> okay. I haven't tried that. Thanks for the tip. I'm going to try that. Yes. So this is what we'll go to after, after the Olympia last year, you knew you were going to have a good off season. Um, did you get feedback from the judges? Did you talk to a C anybody really that you sat down with, or even just yourself, you and your wife figure, what do I need to do to improve? So I stopped getting second place, third place, whatever I want. I want to be undeniable. What, what have you been working on all this time? Well, for one, as a two twelve competitor at five foot eight, I really got to max it out. You know, I got to be at the top of the weight limit because I'm going against a lot of shorter guys that, you know, if they're close to the same weight obviously they're gonna look fake as hell next to me right um but i still think i've improved this a lot but my quads were always a weakness mm. from the front yeah um from the side they look good and i i usually have a really good hamstring drop on the side but from the front and from the back shots my legs just looked a little thin mm. and i think i've really improved that this time i i've Destroy, I destroyed and put a lot of emphasis on the quads um, and then also back thickness. Yeah. I feel like I had one of the widest backs on stage. Yeah. If you look at like comparisons at Chicago Pro and stuff like that. Yeah. But I could have used a little more detail and thickness throughout it. So those were my two main focuses in the off season and, uh, and throughout this prep was just the quads uh, and then uh, the back thickness. So there's a lot of people out there. They need quads too, dude. So help, help them out. What, give us a little idea of what you did. Did you train them twice a week? Did you do some weird exercises? Cause I, nothing crazy. Um, I do split up quads and hamstrings. So one day is just focused on quads. Yeah. Um, but that workout literally there's besides the warm up of some light leg extensions and leg curls to get just the knees and everything warmed up and muscles firing yeah three exercises and oh. i just i literally push two and beyond failure on each of those exercises i go hack squats yep and 
I will work my way up to one heavy top set where I want to fail somewhere between six and nine reps. Okay. If I get 10, that means next week I have to go heavier. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, so progressive overload basically on that. If I get to 10 reps next week, we increase the weight. Um, and then I'll do one back one. Sometimes if I'm feeling it, we'll do two, but usually one back offset. Okay. Um, with that on the hack squat where I want to fail somewhere between uh, 10 and 12 reps. Okay. So a little, little lighter, still going to failure, but a little higher rep range, then go to a leg press. Yep. And I would usually do the leg press uh, sets of 12 to 15, um, three sets. And on the final set, just all out to failure, sometimes throw a drop set in there. And then usually Bulgarian split squats after that. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, it's funny because you, you, if you, on paper, somebody might look at that and go, oh, that doesn't look like much. But <laughs> you know what? You can't do, if you're doing like 12 different exercises on leg day for quads or something, I guarantee there is no way you are going, you're working that hard on all yeah. those sets. In there. It's impossible. That's what I tell people all the time when I write up training programs for people. I'm like, and they're like, that's, that's not enough. I don't feel it at the end of this. I'm like, come train with me in person one day yeah. and let me see how you're training. Send me a video. If you're not, if you're not local and you're not close enough to do that, send me a video of you training. And I'm like, you had, you had 10 more reps in you. You weren't yeah. even close to failure. Mm -hmm. Like most people don't know what failure is. Right. And if you have a training partner, which one of my clients recently moved down here just to train with me. Oh, wow. And so it's awesome because I'm getting him ready for his second show. Hmm. Uh, and he's a classic physique guy. Yeah. And uh, we push each other hard. Like I'm training him, but we, like I, I explained to him what I want him to do to me too. <laughs> and I'm like, what I'm about to do to you, yeah. I want you to do this to me right afterwards. And he'll be doing the hack squat and he goes to rack it. I'm like, I haven't helped yet. Hmm. Keep going. <laughs> and he'll do two more reps and go to rack it. I'm like, I haven't helped yet. He's like, I felt like you were helping. I'm like, no, <laughs> this is still you keep going until I have to help you. Yeah. And if you're doing it by yourself, keep going until you crash at the bottom. This isn't a free weight squat. Yeah. You can't absolutely. do that on a free weight squat. You're going to get hurt. Right. On a hack squat. If I'm by myself, I'm going to go until I crash at the bottom and have to crawl out of it yeah you know the same thing on a squat would be a horrible horrible idea yeah, yeah. i would never do that on a freeway squat you could actually die <laughs> but that's also why one of the reasons i don't do freeway squats very often is i would i got pretty strong at them for a while but i felt it all hamstrings and glutes mm, you know yeah. um it just i would get sore in the quads too but they never grew like they do with the, the hack squat yeah. So you had the courage or the intelligence to recognize that even though everyone says you got to squat, got to squat, got to squat, it's the only way, you know, it doesn't work. They don't work that well for everybody for whatever reason, just biomechanically leverages. But, you know, you're, you're living. One time I was truly, truly beat up from squatting with a barbell was when I trained with Tom Platts and he, he, oh boy. he destroyed me. When was that? Oh, um, that was, um, I want to say, you know what it was actually like two or three weeks before i think it was two weeks before the indie pro where i did wow. in 2018 right after the arnold classic wow was yeah. it was it florida or did we out in la or where was no it? i flew out to california just to train with him yeah wow good dude that's that's the dream if you're gonna pick <laughs> one person in all of past present future tom platts would be the guy you want to train legs with yeah and he <laughs> and he honestly he did fix my form a lot and he uh he ex like, you know, explained to me that, you know, with the way my form was, I really needed to get squat shoes to elevate my heels and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but man, the, talk about intensity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was brutal. Luckily, I'm glad some of it's on video. It was probably shot on like Super 8 or something. I don't know, back in the old days. But it's too bad because a lot of that stuff is not on video of guys like him and Mentzer and Rich Gaspari. You know, now if they were around now in their prime, everything would be on Instagram and YouTube. Oh, yeah. but, but man, yeah. Wow. That must've been so cool. Dude. It's funny. You see the videos of Tom Platt's like, you know, training people or training himself yeah. and like the intensity and stuff like that. And you're like, Oh, you know, he's just playing it up for the video. No, he's not. That's like hundred percent exactly <laughs> how he was in person. 
Like yeah. he straight up said, like he stomped on the floor in the squad area. He was like, look, you stomp here. You let people know this is your space. I don't care if God himself walks in front of you. You let him know this is your spot. <laughs> he's like, until you're done squatting, nobody's in your zone. Wow. And he's, he's, he's got to be like 65, something like that now. Yeah. I know he just had a birthday. I, yeah. he's, he's God, up bless there. Him. God bless him. Tom Platt's a golden eagle. Wow. Yeah. So the other thing that you improved was back thickness. And mm-hmm. God, do a lot. Geez, almost everybody I see needs more back thickness. So pretty much, unless your name is George Peterson III, <laughs> you probably need more back thickness. So did you have to deadlift? Did you figure out other ways? Mostly it was chest-supported rows, chest-supported okay. T-bar rows that really, I've always done heavy, heavy uh, regular T-bar rows, bent over rows, cable rows, pull downs um rack pulls but i never put a ton of emphasis on a chest supported row Mm. and i think that's made the biggest difference to really have that support on the chest and just focus on driving back and contracting without any kind of you can't really cheat that way right you know you can do you can still do barbell rows and t-bar rows you don't have oh and i still do so i actually have two back days a week okay so one that one back day was dedicated towards more of the thickness and ch- ch- the chest supported T-bar row yeah. was like the meat and potatoes movement of the workout. Yeah. And then we would do some other stuff as well. And then I would have a lat, like a lat isolation focused workout for more to keep. I mean, you can never have too, too wide a back. True, true. So I had another one of those where I would do maybe like regular T-bar rows, um, a lot of lat pull downs, single arm lat pull downs, really isolate the lats and stuff like that. Yeah. See, most people don't start trying the chest supported stuff until it's until they have lower back issues. Like I used, I didn't start really doing, I can't do what you can do. I can't do barbell rolls and all that shit anymore. My lower back's trash, right. but it's too bad because, you know, as you discovered, you probably get a better connection. You're able to really contract the lats without having to worry about, you know, maintaining your posture and yeah. your back slipping out you of really place. focus on using the muscles that you're trying to activate. Yeah. yeah. So it's a funny thing you meant you mentioned ham uh or deadlifts though and i actually just oh man i want to say uh i don't know five five six weeks ago maybe maybe a little longer i started throwing deadlifts in but i'm doing them i do them on my hamstring day okay so uh it is i do still obviously you're going to get some back work out there as well but uh i don't know i think it was more of the i used to do deadlifts a lot and i hadn't done them in a long time yeah, And then I started seeing Ian posting a bunch of videos and uh, then Nick Walker posting his deadlift videos. And then uh, like all these guys posting all these heavy deadlifts. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start throwing these back in there and just see, <laughs> see what I've got in the tank. The craziest thing, like I hadn't done it in a very long time. I've, I was never the strongest at them. Yeah. But uh, three weeks out, I hit like an all-time PR. And I hit like five plates per, per side for 14 reps. Yeah. And I was like, just at three weeks out, I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's typically you don't do that. Like we all talk about Ronnie Coleman doing the 800 pounds. I think that was like four weeks up in the Olympia or something, but didn't end well for him, obviously. But you know, Right. Hopefully you won't. Well, that's why it. the past couple of weeks I decided, you know, let's, I was going up to six plates for a top set and get like four reps and then doing a back off with deadlifts to like five plates for reps. And I was like, you know what, these last couple of weeks, let's just, uh, not try to go up to six plates <laughs> let's play yeah. it safe come on dude not now maybe when you're yeah. bulked up again or something yeah. yeah deadlifts have become the most popular lift i see on instagram of any right not just bodybuilders but any schmuck in the gym because <laughs> i think a lot of people realize they can't bench press for shit they can't squat for shit but for some reason a lot of people can pull respectable we're not talking like five six seven hundred pounds but you know, for a 180 yeah. pound kid to do 405 or something. And I was not... always the opposite. Hmm. Like I was weightlifting team through high school and stuff. Bench press was my thing. Hmm. Like I was even in high school, I, I competed in weightlifting at 154 pounds and I was benching 340. Wow. You know, hmm. and like, so I don't really do flat bench press anymore. Yeah. But I think last time I did, I hit, you know, like, I, I want to say like 420 for 10. Oh, wow. Or something. Wow. Yeah. So like a bench press was always just kind of came natural to me. Deadlifts hmm. were always the hardest. 
Yeah. There's a lot of people that can bench press a lot and can't their squats, either squat deadlift or both are not great. And it goes the opposite way. I know a lot of people that are really good squatters and deadlifters, their bench press is horrible. Yeah. So that's why it's crazy. It's, it's elite when you get these people that can do all three of them at a, at a yeah. high level. It's, it's a rare thing, um, man. So why did you pick this show, Chicago, this time of year? How did that fit into your, your schedule of what you've been doing since last season? Well, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of jealous when I saw everyone jumping into Indy and New York mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I would have loved to, but mm -hmm. I knew I wouldn't have made any improvements since the Olympia with the Olympia being in December. So I needed more time to really make those improvements. And uh, when they released the schedule, you got Chicago, Tampa, and Texas all within a month. Right. So, like, you got three pro shows within a month. You know, I've already signed the contract for Tampa as well. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, even if, you know, whatever my placing is at – Chicago, we're doing Tampa as well. Oh, okay. good. And I've got the contract sitting there for Texas uh, if I decide I want to jump in that too. Right on. Tampa is also another Wings of Strength, Tim Gardner production show. Puts, yeah. on, puts on great shows. He puts on amazing shows. Always takes really good care of everybody. I love it because everything starts on time and ends on time. Yeah. Which, you know, that uh, not everyone's able to do that. There's unforeseen since, stuff. Since I turned pro, that was uh, the, my pro debut was Chicago Pro. Oh, okay. Uh, and then right afterwards, I did the Tampa, you know, so I, like that was, you know, and that was a month after I turned pro. Um, so it's what's, just, I've, I've always done his shows. They're always been great. But what's the best part of the Tampa pro? Do you know the answer? It's the day after it's a muscle vodka pool party. Come on. You know, I've never gone to it. <laughs> you got to go this time. Come on. I, I know. <laughs> I've never gone to it, but yeah, this time, especially with my wife competing there as well, yeah. Yeah. I was like, we're both going to be there. We're both going to be in shape. Right. Usually her parents live in Sarasota. So they're like just South of Tampa. Okay. So usually we, we go after the show, we'll just go down and spend a, a day with her family and stuff like that. Huh. Get some family time in for her. Fine. But I mean, she can do that anytime. Come on. <laughs> There's also a really good donut shop down in Sarasota. So uh, okay, well now you're, <laughs> now you're starting to make a better case for Sarasota. Uh, so what are we going to see improvement wise? What, what are we going to see versus the Jason Lowe of 2020? What am I going to see different this time that I didn't see a year ago? You're going to see bigger and harder. Good. That's what I you think. Mean. I'm going to have a minimum minimum of five to seven pounds more muscle. And I'm already harder than I was at New York. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. What is your, what would you call your signature pose? Well, in classic, I had a signature pose for sure. It's right, right there on the wall. Okay. Um, kind of looks like the foot stomp, the Cutler foot stomp. Almost. Uh, yeah. Similar. It's actually, uh, um, my, my anime nerds will, will get it. It's kind of a, it's a Dragon Ball Z thing. Yeah. Um, when, uh, when one of the villains turns into their final form, they, they hit that pose. Which villain? I, I know I, I'm not. Reason. Yeah. I don't know that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, but no, I, I would probably say now I still hit that pose in my routine, Yeah. but for the most part, I really think, uh, my, my one foot out most muscular has really, uh, become a, a really strong shot for me. I, I think my favorite pose of yours, I'm not going to do it because of my little arms, but that crucifix pose you do with the arms oh, yeah. straight out to the side. Yeah. That's, that's I appreciate it. Yeah. I like that one too. Yeah. Cause I that's really like that one too. I've been playing with it, trying to figure out, I was actually figuring that out the other day, whether I should have my legs staggered or straight, like they did old school. I know like Mincer and like uh, Samir, Samir liked to do it with his feet together a lot of times, but then I also see a lot of old classic guys with their legs staggered. I think staggered. Yeah, That's how Mentor used to hit it. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do that. I've been pose playing again. around with it. <laughs> I'm definitely still going to throw that in the, in the routine at night. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, just uh, one final topic is, you know, being five, eight sounds like, Oh no, he's too tall, but Nathan Epler is five, eight. That kid looks amazing. George Peterson's five, eight. Come on. It's third in the world. So I don't think it's a case anymore of 
we seem to be getting away from that idea that you have to be like five three or five four to be an awesome 212 pro i, I think agree. and even kamal's kamal's what five seven or something so i'm down to like five seven and a half when and i think kamal i want to give him like uh, i don't want to get him mad at me but i'm pretty sure he's, <laughs> i want to say like five six maybe i'm wrong I, I, I don't know. I, I'm talking to him last year at the Olympia. He mm-hmm. actually just messaged me a minute ago. Oh. But uh, um, he's a really nice guy. It was really nice oh, yeah. of him. I talked to him, met him at the Olympia, and we've chatted since. He's a su- super nice guy. Very cool guy. Um, and I think he's moving to the U.S. I just, yeah, I just yeah. asked him that again. He's like, yeah, he's going to be here. Uh, he's going to be here soon um, hmm. for a little while. And then he plans on moving next year, I think. Wow. Yeah. I mean. So. very cool guy family man g- owns gyms businesses yeah and he's like the pride when he goes to libya they throw parades for him <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> he's a good dude so yeah i i agree that you know i think the look has changed for the 212 division yeah like it's not just the short guy division anymore right um but i do think that the shorter guys can excel oh, yeah. um and if my body wants to keep growing i'm not going to force it Cause I don't want to lose my shape. I don't want to lose the lines that right. I've worked really hard uh, to keep and to build my waistline. But uh, you know, I do like to eat. <laughs> so if my body wants to keep growing, I mean, I got up to 260 in the off season. Wow. Holy moly. <laughs> I still had abs. I mean, I had a little back fat and I was yeah. bloated, but I still had abs at 260. So that I still had separation in the legs a little bit. So what could you compete at? What could you, if, if you didn't have to be, if you wanted to do open this year and you weren't worried, oh no, this isn't big enough or heavy enough. Could you have come in like 225, 230? As I was dieting down, I think I liked my look best around 225. Mm. Um, I don't think I was quite hard enough though. Okay. So one, one I, more, I, one think more off one, season. <laughs> I think one more really good off season. I, if I really tried, I could compete around 225, 230. Yeah. And, you know, again, there'll be people say, no, that's not, you know what? It's not, it's not, bo- it's not body weight anymore. You know, yeah. Big Rami is 290 or whatever, but it's there's the also, look, though. Yeah. Well, what was Dexter competing at for so many years? Like 235? That's what he said. A lot of people think he was 10 or 15 pounds lighter than that. I don't know what he really weighed, but he I wasn't, mean, it doesn't matter. It's what you look like. Yeah. But his shape and everything, he looked phenomenal. He was the winningest bodybuilder ever. You know, Absolutely. it's like, so, you know, I think with my shape and the way I'm put together, if I came in with, you know, lights out conditioning yeah. at 225, 230, I'm not saying I'm going to be top five at the Olympia at 230, yeah. but I think I could do well in some pro shows. Absolutely. I mean, and you won't know until you try. And you're, how old are you, Jason? I'm 34. 34? You, you look you know, young. Look, you could still, you could be on one of these Netflix high school shows or something. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's that's still young and bodybuilding, obviously. So I don't think the fact that you've made such progress in the last few years tells me you still have some more progress left in you. I don't think you're maxed no. out by any means. I think you have another possibly 15 pounds or more muscle to put on before it's all said and done. I, I think I definitely could. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I started kind of late in bodybuilding. Um, you know, I didn't really start training for bodybuilding until I was like 24 or 25. Yeah, really? What the hell? Yeah. I mean, I always worked out. Yeah. You know, a weightlifting team through high school and stuff, but I never, like, I was 155 pounds is the biggest I ever was in high school. You know, I did, I, I lived off of peanut butter sandwiches and Hot Pockets, you know, so I didn't know anything about nutrition and, you know, how to build muscle. I just worried about getting strong. That's all I really cared about then. So uh, I didn't really start learning about bodybuilding until like 24, 25 and start really training towards that, you know? So, uh, and then, you know, I trained natural and turned pro natural, right. you know, in, in 2017. So wow. it wasn't until after that, that I went to the doctor, got my blood work done and realized that dieting it, you know, staying at 5% body fat for a year and a half destroys your testosterone. Yeah. yeah. So uh, then, uh, you know, the doctor prescribed me some testosterone and we went from there, but um, yeah, it was, so I think that's part of why, you know, I still have a lot of, you know, uh, that was 20, 2017 that that happened. Yeah. Oh, geez. So you barely, you barely been 
you've just started kid you got soft oh, dude you're <laughs> yeah plenty of plenty of progress to be made plenty yeah, yeah. it's funny it's funny you mention that because i remember there i remember a study on natural bodybuilding competitors their testosterone levels at, at competition time and it was like they were all oh, like yeah. 200 210 oh, 180 they were 30 levels. years old yeah 30 years old and i didn't get my blood work done until a couple months after I was done competing. I was, I had put on a little body fat back trying to like get healthy and stuff. Yeah. I went and got my blood work done. And I was like 227. Wow. Yeah. yeah. There's, there is no shame in TRT guys. No yeah. shame. You know, women can get fake boobs, fake butt, fake lips, <laughs> pull their face up when they're 50 to look like they're 30 again. <laughs> a guy wants to yeah. do a little bit of tests to look and feel yeah. better. And if God you're bless a doctor, you. you're key, you're getting your blood work done and it's, you're going to feel so much healthier and better. Yeah. Like I was at the point at 30 years old where I was literally having to take naps all day long. To just, I wasn't recovering. I was sore all the time. Just yeah. like the doctor even told me, he's like, dude, you've been fighting an uphill battle. I don't even know how you've gotten where you are. Yeah. Low T sucks. Yeah. Sucks, sucks, sucks. So yeah, no shame and no shame in that game at all. Especially, you know, I'm glad the medical community is coming around. And it's not like the old days where they'd say, oh, it's going to give you prostate cancer. It's going to do this, right. it's do that. No, because I actually was lucky enough to be, when I went on doctor prescribed TRT, I was fortunate enough to work, be a patient of a guy named Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler. Do you know that name? I don't know. Google him. Very, <laughs> very famous. He, he literally wrote the book on TRT. I think it's called TRT for Life or something. Teaches at Harvard, Harvard Medical School. And he's been one of the ones who's been a champion for it for like 20 years. Uh, you know, when the rest of the medical community was, they were citing studies from like the forties and fifties to say that, that it was bad for you, stuff like that. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent. <laughs> so Chicago pro is coming up. Coming yeah. for it. Yeah. You're psyched. You're up uh, the first day of judging, right? Yeah. We go on Friday. Yeah, So you'll be all done by Friday night. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I got, I, I'm pumped. I'm excited for it. Obviously, I'm going to stay and watch the big guys because, well, also I have clients competing on Saturday in the amateurs. Oh, right on. But uh, I'm I'm excited to see the the open division too. Like, uh, you know, Hunter's looking insane. Yeah. Brett Wilkin, Brett, gonna, Brett I think he's going to shock some people. <laughs> I, he's I, looking I, crazy. Anybody who follows Brett Wilkin's Instagram knows he is just, and he kept the waist tight. And he, yeah, he's like 248 right now. Yeah, he was, was a two. Great. He was a two twelve two years ago. He turned pro in classic. Yeah, and he's yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I like seeing these guys. Yeah, I like seeing the improvement, especially when they're able to keep. You know, I don't. If the waist goes out to here, it's like ugh. But you know, I'm. There's talked, been a lot. I was of talking to him last night, and mm -hmm. I was like, dude, you've got me honestly wanting to take a full year off and try and <laughs> just move to the open. I was like, I was like, you like what he's done. His mode is motivating me to want to take that time to really see what I can do. Well, you got a couple shows. You might, your season might end up going all the way till October 7th at the Olympia. But after that's that, the that's the goal, obviously. But after that, yeah, I think you have it in you. I mean, geez, you're I, young, I, you're, young, you're highly motivated. in the freezer ready to help me bulk. <laughs> Man, so cool guy. Uh, very, very excited to see the improvements, Jason. You're, you've been one of the best guys for a while. I, I think you have a good shot at this. You're going to be up against Keon again. Oh, God. It's going to be a battle. But I love battles. I just hope they, I just hope they put me right next to him and we really get to battle it out. They will. Because when you and Bo, that was the – to me, that was one of the highlights of that show was the, the final comparisons with you two. I love yeah. it when like, you don't know what's going to happen. Are they going it, to was, go it was fun, too. And, and, it's, and it's always fun when you, you're friends with the person, too. You know, like right. me and Bo have become really good friends since then. And me and Keon have been friends since uh, – we both turned pro at junior USA's in 2017. That's right. That's right. And we were, we were messaging each other leading up to that. Like, dude, we're, you're going pro. He's like, you're going pro too. And like, we're both going to go pro at this show. And we did. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So you've known him five years already. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's young. He's, geez, what is he like? 26? He's young. Yeah. He's, isn't he, he's not even that old. Is he? He's like 25, 26. Yeah. Yeah. He's really young. I, I lose track. These young, you guys are all I want to say young. 26 because, yeah, yeah, but yeah, he's still, he's young. Absolutely. So yeah, looking forward to it, Jason. It's going to be a great show. I'm and excited. The, we'll be there guys. So catch that whole weekend, be on musculardevelopment.com on the forums, our YouTube channel, 
our Instagram. We're going to have all kinds of coverage. We want to bring Jason and all the other guys right to you. If you can't make it to Atlanta for the show, we want to make it just like you're there. So try and cover as much of the prep leading into the show on my YouTube channel as well. So what is your YouTube? Let's get people on. Just my name, Jason Lowe. Jason Lowe with an E guy. Yeah. L-O-W-E. Yep. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm going to try and try and show the whole process leading into the show. So perfect. As much as I can. People are fascinated with peak week. They love it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like I, my YouTube channel is still pretty small. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my hardest to build it up, but I, uh, the the most views I get are usually when I'm competing that that peak week those peak week videos and then the post the post show binge eating they love those, eating those, they love eating you they know, love the eating they yes. love pigging out and they love if you make a video called what I eat in a day it's it's a guaranteed yeah. guaranteed tons of views <laughs> that they love. or you know I I keep having people message me like all right after the show we, we want to see that twenty thousand calorie challenge oh. Yeah. Cause I don't know, Juan Morell, obviously the co him and his wife owned my cookie dealer. He, he used to make these videos. I think he made two or three of them where he would eat 30,000 calories in one day. Yeah. Sunday. The, most, the most I've ever gotten down was 18,400 or something like that. That's a lot. And yeah. like 15,000 is just like a normal cheat day for me. I feel great. <laughs> but anything past 15,000, I'm like force feeding it down. It's like hard. So calories. wow. Wow. Yeah, I can't. I, I don't know if I could ever do 30,000, but like, I bet you, you know, I, I've got a good appetite, but when I hit that 15,000 calories, it just kind of slows yeah. down on me. It's a genetic thing. I, I, I don't want to keep coming off on tangents. His, his, <laughs> his interview should go up before this. He's a classic pro, this guy, Bartley Weaver the fourth, and he does competitive eating. Yeah. And I asked him, I'm going to get this wrong, but I said, what's the most impressive? What would impress me the most? He goes, I think it was like 36 slices of large pizza in 30 minutes. I'm like, damn, dude. That's good. There's a pizza place here in Daytona that uh, has a pizza challenge, and it's a 34-inch pizza, 60 slices. Uh, it's a team challenge. So I got my buddy from, that lives in Orlando. He's a coach as well um, to come over, and me and him did it. You get an hour, and we finished it in like, I don't know, under 40 minutes. And that, you had to, that needs to be on video. I, it's needs, on there. It's an oh, old okay. video, though. It's on, it's on the YouTube channel, but it's an old video. It's probably not the best quality because I was just learning how to do YouTube, but it's on there. And I, you had to roll us out of there. Wow. It, it was it was a tough challenge, but it, it was delicious. I asked him this one. Did you throw up after or no? I did not. No, mm -hmm. I actually I, I got home. I laid on the bed sideways, feet still <laughs> hanging off fully clothed, passed out, woke up in a, a puddle of sweat. Yeah. I went for a walk around my neighborhood, got home and ate a whole box of cereal and went to bed. Wow. We were, did your ankles <laughs> get like this big? It wasn't not surprisingly. No, I felt then I woke up the next morning, like five 30 in the morning, starving. Wow. Like that's how I, that's how my body works. I will yeah. like eat till I cannot eat anymore. Yeah. And I'll feel almost sick from eating. And right. the next day I wake up starving. That's a good metabolism. That's what that is. That's is a very good metabolism. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Jason, thank you for taking the time. I know we're, as we're speaking now, you're a little more than a week out. Let's say Wednesday. Yeah, this, is. this probably won't air till the week of the show. So I, won't, I shouldn't have said when we recorded this, but best of luck yeah. to you. Great physique. I want to see the improvements. Uh, I'll Appreciate be there. It. I can't cheer for you. We're not supposed to be cheering from the press pit, <laughs> but uh, I will be, I will be cheering inside. Trust me. <laughs> Well, thank, thanks for having me on. I appreciate the support and I love coming on anytime. So awesome. I'm excited. I'm bringing my best and uh, I'm ready to do it. Cool, man. I will see you in Atlanta. Yeah. All man. right. See you there. All right, guys, everybody. Thanks for watching Ron Line Report with IFBB underscore Broco on Instagram, Jason Lowe on YouTube. Jason Lowe. Check him out next week in the 212 division. It'll actually be this week. Thanks for watching.